Hi, fourth graders. My name is Ms. Tama Show. Uh, my students usually call me Ms. T for short. And I'm here to teach you um, making meaning lesson today. I'm really excited to be able to do this. Um, I really miss my classroom and I miss my students and I miss doing my job and going and teaching every day. And um, even though kids complain a lot about school, I, I bet there are some things that you miss about it too. Um, so we can miss those things, but still be the teachers and the students that we can be from our homes. Um, and, and we can do that together um, through this lesson today. Um, so welcome to my classroom <laughs> that's at home. Um, this is actually a little corner of my daughter's playroom um, that I've turned into my classroom for the moment. Um, so welcome. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how this lesson will go before I actually start teaching and reading to you. Um, I know that when you are in your regular classrooms and you're doing making meaning especially, there are probably times when your teacher will ask you to turn and talk to your partner. They might say it like um, think, pair, share. They might say turn to your partner. That's what I usually say. Um, but a lot of our lessons in school have to do with talking with our classmates and thinking about things that way. Obviously, you can't do that when you're at home. You don't have classmates around you. Um, but the, the act of talking about our thinking and saying our thoughts out loud is still really important to do. When you say things out loud, you're often able to expand upon your ideas and you hear yourself say your ideas and so you can um, add on to what you're thinking or change your thinking a little bit. So I am still going to expect that there are times throughout this lesson that you think in your head, but then you actually say your ideas out loud also. You can say your ideas to a family member, to a pet, to a stuffed animal. You could just talk to the invisible person that you imagine standing next to you, talk to the wall. Um, however you choose to do it is fine. I know it might feel a little bit weird, um, but it really is good for our brains when we say what we're thinking. Um, so whenever you hear me say, turn to your partner today, I do hope that you'll say, you'll say your thoughts out loud. Um, I know that last week in your last lessons, you were working on giving reasons for your opinions by using the prompt, the reason I think this is. And I'm gonna ask for you to do that today as well at the end of our reading. Um, it's such an important skill to be able to provide reasons for your thinking. It really helps make your thinking and your opinion stronger. So we'll keep working on that today. Okay, so this is the book we're going to read today. It's called A Picture Book of Amelia Earhart. It is by David A. Adler and illustrated by Jeff Fisher, and it's published by Holiday House. Um, this is a biography, which means it's a story about someone's life, but written by somebody else. And it is a biography of Amelia Earhart. She was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean on her own. Not long after Charles Lindbergh completed his flight. She completed many other pioneering flights as well, and she really affected the way that people thought about what women, men and women are capable of and the way that women behave. So I'm excited to read this. I know who Amelia Earhart is. I know some things that have happened to her, but I don't know a whole lot about her life. So I'm, I'm excited to learn more about her while I'm reading this with you today. All right. Amelia Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24th, 1897. Her parents were Edwin, Edwin Earhart, a lawyer for a railroad, and Amy Earhart, the daughter of a wealthy judge. In 1900, the Earharts had a second daughter, Muriel. Amelia was not a quiet schoolgirl. She threw mud balls, jumped over fences, played baseball and football, and shot her own 22 rifle to rid the family's barn of rats. When she was seven, she made her own roller coaster using fence rails and a pair of old roller skates. 
Although other girls their age wore long, ruffled dresses, Amelia and Muriel Earhart often wore loose-fitting pants called bloomers. The Earhart girls' behavior was shocking to some people. Shocking means surprising. The Earhart girls' behavior was shocking to some people, but Amelia wrote later, some elders have to be shocked for everybody's good now and then. Amelia was 11 years old when she first saw an airplane. It was 1908, five years after the Wright brothers made the first successful flight. Amelia wrote later that at the time, she thought it was just a thing of rusty wire and wood, not at all interesting. After high school, Amelia went to the Ogont School in Pennsylvania. Amelia was tall and thin. In a letter to her parents from school, she drew a sketch of herself dressed in a suit with a pleated skirt and wrote, I look like a broomstick wrapped round and round. And she wrote, did I tell you I have a reputation for brains? Having a reputation for brains means she's known for being smart. She wrote, did I tell you I have a reputation for brains? So let's pause here and just stop and think for a moment. What did you learn about Amelia in the part of the story you just heard? Think in your head. And then turn to your partner and go ahead and talk your thoughts in whatever language is most comfortable to you. So you might have said something like, I learned that Amelia didn't really care about planes the first time she saw them. Or I learned that Amelia was pretty smart. Or you might have said something else of what you learned about Amelia so far. She wrote, did I tell you I have a reputation for brains? Amelia spent Christmas 1917 with her sister in Toronto, Canada. There she saw soldiers who had returned from the First World War. Years later, she wrote, for the first time, I realized what the World War meant. Instead of new uniforms and brass bands, I saw only the results of four years desperate struggle. Men without arms and legs, men who were paralyzed. Paralyzed means you can't feel or move certain parts of your body. Men who were paralyzed and men who were blind. Soon after the holiday, Amelia quit school. She went back to Toronto, became a nurse's aide and cared for the war wounded. While Amelia was in Toronto, she went to a nearby airfield and had another look at airplanes. Some years later, she explained that though I had seen one or two at county fairs before, I now saw many of them. I hung around in my spare time and absorbed all I could. Absorbed means learned about. I hung around in my spare time and absorbed all I could. After the war, Amelia studied automobile engine repair. The next year, she took courses in New York City at Columbia University and Barnard College. At first, she was preparing to study medicine. Later, she decided to do medical research. After the school year ended, Amelia went to be with her parents who had moved to California. On Christmas Day, 1920, she went to an air show and three days later, she paid $1 for a 10 minute airplane ride. As soon as I left the ground, she wrote later, I knew I myself had to fly. In January, 1921, Amelia took her first flying lesson. In July, she bought her first airplane. She paid for the lessons and airplane with money she earned working for the Los Angeles Telephone Company and with money given and loaned to her by her mother and sister. Flying wasn't as safe then as it is today. Airplanes were powered by small engines. Amelia had several crash landings. Once she was thrown into an open airfield. Another time her airplane turned over in heavy rain and Amelia, held in by her safety belt, hung upside down. In 1924, Amelia's parents divorced. She sold her airplane and bought a yellow sports car and drove her mother east to their new home in Medford, Massachusetts. Sam Chapman, a chemical engineer, followed Amelia East. Chapman wanted Amelia to marry him, but Amelia refused to become what she called a domestic robot. A domestic robot would be somebody who only kind of took care of things at their home. 
Amelia refused to become what she called a domestic robot. At the time, she said, I don't want to marry anyone. On weekdays, Amelia had a job as a social worker in a community center in nearby Boston, teaching English to immigrant children. On weekends, she flew for sport and as a saleswoman for an airplane builder. On May 1927, Charles Lindbergh became the first to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. The next year, Amelia Earhart became the first woman to make the flight. She was co-passenger aboard an airplane named Friendship. In June 1928, Amelia, Bill Stoltz, and Slim Gordon climbed into the Friendship. It was painted orange so it would be easy to find in case of an accident and was fitted with pontoons. Pontoons were parts of a plane that would help it float. It was fitted with pontoons so if they couldn't complete the trip, they could land on the ocean. Before the trip, Amelia telegraphed her mother, don't worry, no matter what happens, it will have been worth the trying. While Stultz flew the plane, Amelia checked maps and kept a record of their speed and altitude. She also looked out the window at clouds she described as marvelous shapes in white. She was, she wrote, gulping beauty. On June 18, 1928, after 20 hours and 40 minutes in the air, the plane landed in the water in the harbor of Burryport, Wales. Amelia described the flight as a grand experience, but since she didn't pilot the plane, she said she felt like baggage. So think for a moment here, what did you learn about Amelia in the part of the story you just heard? Think in your head and then turn and tell your partner. I was thinking about this too, and I was thinking what I just learned about Amelia is that she really started to love flying. And she was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. Maybe you said something different. Maybe you learned something else that stuck with you. I'm gonna keep reading. Since she didn't pilot the plane, she said she felt like baggage. So the next few pages show that Amelia was really celebrated for being the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. And after her trip, she wrote a lot. She wrote books and she wrote articles. Um, and she gave lectures and speeches and she became really well known. She got married to her publicist and soon after she got married, she decided that she wanted to fly across the Atlantic Ocean again, only this time she wanted to do it alone. Amelia Earhart took off in a red and gold single engine airplane from Harbor Grace, Newfoundland on May 20th, 1932. She flew through strong winds, heavy rain, and thick clouds, often with the wings and windshield of her airplane covered with slush and ice, until she landed the next afternoon in a pasture in Londonderry, Northern Ireland. She said later that her landing frightened all the cows in the neighborhood. Have you come far? The first person to see her asked. From America, Amelia Earhart told him. Have you now? The man said, not sure he could believe her. With this flight, Amelia Earhart became the very first woman and just the second person after Charles Lindbergh to fly alone across the Atlantic Ocean. She became one of the most celebrated people of her time. In June, President Herbert Hoover presented her with a gold medal, one of many awards she received for her great achievement. He called her a pioneering woman. Amelia Earhart said she just hoped her flight has meant something to women in aviation. Aviation is the science and building of airplanes. Has meant, she, uh, Amelia Earhart said she just hoped her flight has meant something to women in aviation. It did. Amelia Earhart's many daring adventures meant a lot to women in all fields. Amelia Earhart had other flying adventures. In January 1935, she became the first to fly from Hawaii to California. With that flight, she also became the first to fly alone across both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. In April, she became the first to fly alone from Los Angeles to Mexico City. 
1937, she planned to fly around the world. When she was told the flight was dangerous, Amelia said, I wanted to do this flight for a long time. If I should pop off, pop off means to die. If I should pop off, it will be doing the thing I've always wanted to do. On June 1, 1937, Amelia Earhart and her navigator, Fred Noonan, began the trip. They flew from Miami, Florida to San Juan, Puerto Rico. They flew to South America, then to Africa, India, Burma, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, and New Guinea. They had gone more than three-fourths around the world. On July 2nd, they took off from Leh, New Guinea for Howland Island, a tiny island in the vast Pacific Ocean. They never made it. Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan disappeared somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. There was an enormous search, but they were never found. Before she was lost, Amelia wrote to her husband, I am quite aware of the hazards. I want to do it. Women must try to do things as men have tried. When they fail, their failures must be but a challenge to others. Amelia Earhart was America's first lady of the air. She was a courageous, courageous means brave. She was a courageous flyer, a pioneer. She risked her life to prove that in the air and elsewhere, women were up to the challenge. She certainly was. Go ahead and think in your head again. What did you learn about Amelia in this part of the story that you just heard? And then turn to your partner. So maybe you said something like, I learned that Amelia did a lot of things um, alone as a woman pilot and that a lot of people didn't think that that could happen, but she proved them all wrong. Or maybe you said something like, I learned that Amelia Earhart died when she was trying to fly around the world. Um, there are a couple more pages. I'm not going to read them right now, but there is a timeline of Amelia Earhart's life at the end. And then there is an author's note giving a little bit more information about Amelia Earhart also. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions about what we read. Um, and when I ask you these questions, just like the other times, I would like you to think in your head first and then say them out loud. This time, when you say them out loud, give reasons for your opinions, give reasons for why you're thinking what you're thinking by using the prompt, the reason I think this is. So my first question is, what are some ways that Amelia Earhart challenged how people thought women should behave and live? Go ahead and think in your head. And then turn and talk and use this prompt to give reasons for why you think what you do. So maybe you said something like, Amelia Earhart challenged how people thought women should behave by doing things like wearing pants when she was a kid. I'm gonna show you that example from the text to make sure I'm using the text to back up my thinking. There it is. Maybe Amelia Earhart challenged the way people thought that women should behave and live by studying automobile engine repair and studying medicine. And the reason I think this might have challenged the way people thought women should behave is because um, she's like one of the only women who's doing these things. And also, I think this because when it talks about her wearing pants as a kid, it says that a lot of people were shocked by that, but that Amelia didn't really care. In fact, she said some elders have to be shocked for everybody's good now and then. My next question is, um, on page 16, it talks about how Amelia was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean when she joined Bill Stoltz and Slim Gordon in the Friendship on June 
18, 1928. And it says... Amelia described the flight as a grand experience, but since she didn't pilot the plane, she said she felt like baggage. What do you think she meant by this? Go ahead and turn and talk. Maybe you said something like, I think when she said she felt like baggage, I think she meant that she felt kind of disappointed because even though she enjoyed flying, she didn't actually do the flying herself. She was just the passenger. And the reason I think this is because we learn that she's such a leader um, and then we also learn later that she decides she wants to fly across the Atlantic Ocean again, only she wants to do it alone. So just doing it as a passenger wasn't good enough for her. That's what I think she meant by that. All right, so what we did today is we learned about Amelia Earhart in this story. Um, we talked a little bit about Amelia Earhart at the end of the book and we gave reasons for our opinions, for thinking the things that we did about her. It's so important to give reasons for your opinions and to really back up your thinking. It makes your argument stronger and it grows your brain muscles too. Um, it's now time for IDR. So for IDR today, I expect you to read for 30 minutes. Um, I hope you find a good place to read, um, maybe a, a quiet place where you can focus or as quiet as it can be. I know it's kind of hard to do that when you're home sometimes. Um, but really try to find a place where you can be focused. And as you're reading, I'd like you to practice the skill that you learned last week, which is identifying important ideas in the text that you're reading. So every couple of pages, every time you read a chunk, that's what I call it, a chunk of text, just stop and think to yourself, what's important about what I just read? What's an important idea in what I just read? And then when you're finished reading, maybe you could share one of those important ideas with a family member, shoot a note to your teacher. Maybe you could write it down in your packet from the district if you have one of those packets. Um, I just really encourage you to, to stop and think about those important ideas. That's something that very strong readers do and it helps us hold on to the things that we've read and learned. I know that it can be hard to do this, this hard work of thinking about like things like important ideas when you're home, when you don't have a teacher making sure you do it. Um, but it's such an important part of, of being a student, even when you're not in school, even when you're at home, really pushing yourself to do that hard thinking work. All right, thank you so much for sharing this book with me. I really enjoyed reading it and talking about it and thinking about it, and I'll see you next time.